money will be yours, my son. Only you know where it's hidden. And no one else must know about it, hear? Now get. Go and hide on the roof. And you, Papa? Get, I said. Thank you for the reception you've given our Gary Maguire, Hurricane West. <laughs> but if any man among you would care to dispute the clearly prodigious ability of the most famous pistol shot in the West. <laughs> well, as I was saying, if he cared to dispute the authenticity of this exhibition, let him challenge Hurricane West. And if there happens to be a gentleman with enough skill in this audience, let him come forward. I challenge you. Thank you, sir. Step forward, please. <laughs> yourself tonight? You are marvelous. Ah, seems I was in particularly good form. Oh, where's that pesky old jug? Never can find it. Here you are. Ah, oh, thanks, Tony. What's that scar on your neck? The scar? An engine arrow. Sue. There were 20 of them and just four of us, but it's a story everybody knows. It's almost like a fairy tale. <laughs> almost, but it sure wasn't. You see, I'm still here, but those poor engines are all in the green pastures and the happy hunting ground. But do you really have to leave tomorrow? Yes, it's true, Tony. We're going to win it, and then to Lewistown, and then who knows where. But we'll be back next year. Gee, but that's a mighty long time. There's so much I have to learn from you first. What you could learn from me, anybody could teach you. That's what you think. Wait till you get back, then I'll show you what a good pistol I'm going to become. I'm already training alone, see? Just watch.
Never do that. Don't you ever point a gun at anyone again. Look, it was loaded. Gee, I, I didn't know, Gary. It's a very old gun, but it can kill you just as dead as a new one can. Where'd you get it? Well, I, uh, found it. If we're gonna be buddies, you and me, you mustn't lie. You must have taken it, Tony. It's Mr. Claridge's. He's the, uh, the pharmacist. He's my foster hey, father. Hey, Tony, may the Lord be praised. Where's the pistol, Tony? Did you take it? Oh, don't worry. It's been unloaded. Thanks, Mr. McGuire. Mrs. Claridge is very angry, you know. Come on, Tony. Oh, Let's go home fooling. now. Better go now, Tony. Or Marius get into trouble. Just a minute, Marius. So long, Gary. I'll see you next year. Don't forget I'm waiting. Next year, Tony. Word of honor? Word of honor. We must go now, Tony. And when I'm talking, you might have the decency to listen. Instead of making your disgusting mixtures. Yes, dearest. I'm listening. You must make a decision. Now, Thomas. Ah, here he is. Everything all right, Miss Claridge. Here, we found the pistol. Give it to me. Uh, Tony, my boy, uh, you've been a very naughty boy, you know. You can go, Marius. Ah, yes, sir. Now, uh, uh, Tony, you know quite well that firearms aren't for children. And when we accepted the proposal of your tutor, Mr. Brody, to make your home with us and to give you uh, an education uh, of some sorts, you seemed, uh, well, quite a reasonable little fellow. Although you were, uh, how shall I put it, uh, a bit rustic. But we would never have imagined that you would turn out to be such a delusion. That's right, isn't it, dearest? Makes me feel very sorry. It's thanks to you that I have a home at all. On your feet. Don't you have any manners when Mr. Claridge is talking? But why? It's better this way. So it's better this way. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to teach you with a few whacks of this stick. Miss Claridge, if you try and hit me with that stick, I warn you, it won't be all that easy. <gasps> Just take this. <gasps> oh. Not even with a whip am I afraid of you. I never took a thrashing from father. Bullies. Thomas, a letter has to be written to that tutor Brody. But I... Yes, I know. Now, don't try to defend that little rascal. He's a rebel, a criminal, and you'll see that his tutor's informed at once. But there's the question... Right as I told you to do. Maybe we can help you. No, thanks. Just the same. We're lucky we got a doctor in there. Who was it? Bandits down in the canyon. Slaughter. They ambushed my family in the Bryant. It was all over in a flash. They robbed us of the money we brought along with us. We were on our way to Lewistown. The government had given us a grant of farmland. Bad place for farmers, Lewistown. Others had grants like you folks here, but they cleared out. Those who didn't die lead poisoning, anyway. It's criminal. That's right, good farmland. Yeah, but for Coleman's cattle, that's home range. He wouldn't be worried by no government grants or barbed wire fences. You met his gunmen already. Did you see which way those rats were heading? Toward the hills. That way, son. Caves at Silver Hill. Perfect for making a share out. How many were they? 
Five or six. Not more. Who joined a posse? I'll show Will Crab. Me too. McGuire. I saw your show at Clayton. You're a great artist. Oh, I make out all right. I'd be grateful if you'd kind of come along with us. May I count on you? Of course you can. We'll all come, Crab. We'll attack on two sides. You take the west. Get going. You'll come with me. Right. I can smell smoke. We'd better take a look. Tell the others. You keep an eye on them. Don't let them get away. Don't worry. I got 12 shots. Two each. It's enough for anyone. <laughs> In all, that's $3,720, uh... Divided by six, that's... Um, 635 each. 635. Is that right, boss? I don't want that money, see? What do you mean that, Roy? I don't want none of that stinking sheep farmer's dinero. Divide it up among the five of you. <laughs> sure, thanks, boss. And this is yours. Count them again, two-timer. What do you mean, two-timer? You ain't cheating me. <coughs> Leave him be. Yeah, no, 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 no. I can't have you fighting over a few measly dollars. I'll make the share out. Fellas, not a one of them alive. <laughs> Good job, McGuire. The government ought to give a medal. You can always get free drunk in Green Rock, McGuire. So you wanted to play a lone hand, huh? Well, you did a great job. Sure. Five shots and five clients for Boot Hill. That's real shooting. The greatest shot in the territory. <laughs> These are yours. You've earned them. Thanks. But weren't there six of them bandits? That's right. One of them got away under cover. But I got a glimpse of his face, and when we need him, he'll get his. One of these days. Here you are, Sheriff. The man was right. 
Hurricane West killed them all on his own. Tell me it was Hurricane West from Brown Circus. I was told there were ten of them desperados. Oh, there were five. I reckon the circus must need some publicity. <laughs> well? Read it for yourself, Coleman. Drunken liar. Well, thank you for your trouble, Corbett. I'll go and take care of it. Don't mention it. Cut it out. Listen to me. How many men attacked you at the mine, Roy? Around 30. I didn't count. Are you sure? 30? Well, it was around 30. Maybe more, maybe less. Anyway, it was too many for six of us. You're not only a fool, you're a damn liar as well. Read that. Come over here, you idiot, and see for yourself. There. I don't understand. What do you mean? Take a look down there in front of that caravan. Do you recognize that man? There goes your 30 men. It's only one. Gary Maguire. Enthusiastic young fella. Good day to you, Mr. Brody. Good day, Tony. I'm pleased to see you're in the very best of health. I wish I could say the same for your temperament. Oh, character and boyish high spirits. He's a rebel. I have a great responsibility, young man, to you and to the memory of your father. There's a military school in Boston. Right now, a little discipline is what's needed to give you a polish. Sir, you're my guardian. It's for you to decide. Obliging of you, young fella. I've already decided. <laughs> I want another. <laughs> Why, everybody. Here's a toast to those plow chasing farmers with squatting on our range. May the hogs die of measles and the chickens get the crew. <laughs> okay. Well, us plow chasing farmers want to drink to the health of the feller who sent five vultures like you down to frying hell. <laughs> a coyote sure sounds like an old gray wolf, but he's still a coyote. A wolf's a wolf. Well, he's got a wolf's fangs. And he don't have to defend his land with barbed wire. No barb on my land, amigo. And if you want to try my fangs, just stretch out your hand. <laughs>
down, gent. Take it easy. No calls for shooting. It's a pretty nice way to welcome a fellow who's come all this way to offer you a drink. Well, it's liquor you're talking about. Now, friend, you're talking business. That's better, my friends. Hey, barman. That's a nice howdy do. Where is he? Yes, here I am, sir. Throw me one of them bottles. Yes, sir. At once, sir. Go on, throw it. <clears throat> Hey! Set up them glasses. There's enough for everybody. You're drinking with Gary McGuire. Hurricane wind. Hey! Hold it there, McGuire. I'm buying the drinks. To show our gratitude and appreciation. You're famous for your shooting, McGuire. Now you're going to be famous for your courage as well. Anyone in my place would have done the same. You're too modest. Drinks for everybody. <laughs> now, I would like to have a word with you. I can always use someone who can really shoot. And you seem to fill the bill. And when Mr. Coleman wants something, money's no object. Whatever the price, maybe. <laughs> well, to any question of that, I wouldn't be able to leave my friends in the circus. They count on me too much. among you, ladies and gentlemen, who would like to challenge the great Hurricane West, just step down into the ring. We're ready for you. I challenge him. No. I'll do it. Well, I'm here. What have I got to do? Bravo! Finally, we found a man with courage. Someone who is willing to risk his dollars in spite of impossible odds. Your name, sir? Allroyd. All right, then. Allroyd against Hurricane West. Twenty dollars to start with. Mr. Allroyd bets twenty dollars. To your places. Let's go, hero. Ready? Fire! Go ahead. I've seen you some other place. Silver Hill? No. I've never been there. You're mistaken. Maybe so. But I'll be happier when you're buried in the boneyard. Quit your fooling. So you've never seen me? You're right there. Careful now. 
You're staking your reputation, Sonny. Great Hurricane West. Seems you're a little nervous. My compliments. Old Royd wins twenty dollars. You want to go on with it? Yeah, the lot. Very well, sir. The gentleman bets forty dollars. Bring out the bells for the snap shooting. Forward. The first man to hit the bell without stepping over the red line is the winner. You were very brutal in killing those poor boys. They were friends of mine. You know it wasn't me. Yeah, that's right. But you're afraid to face your audience and tell the truth. Suppose I tell them you did it. Go ahead. But it's your word against mine. It's not quite so simple. Listen, McGuire, I'll confess. If I'm beaten, that is. Allez, hop, oop, do your places. <laughs> Go! is the winner. Music! Now just keep your trap shut if you want to go on living. Get out! Could you drink a little coffee? I made it specially for you. No, thanks, Maggie. Leave me alone. Very well. Thank you. 
Hey, Roy. Just look at that. Hi there, hero. Hi. Howdy. Well, well, look who's here. If it ain't Hurricane West. Pleasure to have you in town, amigo. Come and have a drink. I'm paying for it. This time, Roy's a paying. Well, thanks a lot, friends. But not today. I got a lot to do. Oh, McGuire, tied to a woman's apron string. You ain't riled because I beat you last night, are you? Sure hope not. No. <laughs> not at all. Good. No hard feelings, then. Let's drink to our friendship. Perhaps beer don't agree with him so early in the morning. Oh, we can offer you whiskey, and if you refuse now, we'll be offended. <laughs> A small one, then. Well, be our guest. Yes, Mr. Spirit. After you. Nothing like a drink to clear the dust. Hey there. You help me. Uh, two doubles. <laughs> to the health of all heroes, real or fake, who are here in Briggs County. <laughs> <laughs> Help yourselves, fellas. Have some fun with him. I had my fun with him yesterday evening. <laughs> Cheers. You don't want to drink alone, amigo. Why, no. A whiskey for everyone. Now, now. Don't step out of line. Don't you know that everything's offered by Roy? That's generous. At least let me pay for one round of whiskey. It's a pleasure. They're good for nothings. Drink up, McGuire. It's on me. You heard what he said. Come on, now. <laughs> Very funny. If you think it's funny to take advantage of a man when he's all alone, well, watch out. You watch out. I might get riled. <laughs> Just come out of it, boys. Don't move them out of Come on. <laughs> now, the bombs rush, huh? All right. Out. Tonight, Gary, keeping my fingers crossed for you. How do you feel about it? There's still time to back out. I'll be okay. You can go ahead. The prodigious Gary Maguire, Hurricane West! Get in there. 
All of you. that this is the only way out? I don't know. It's the only way possible. The easiest way, perhaps. You can't forget ten years and just ride away. Sorry. It's no good, Maggie. I've made up my mind. I'm spoiling the circus. But you're the star, Gary. The show is nothing without you. You must tell me everything, Gary. Because I love you. We'll work it out. I'll tell you, Maggie. But you won't be able to help me. But do let me try. I'm sure I can help. It just ain't worth it, honey. Look, you know what this is? I didn't get it fighting the Sioux. The scars, the mark of Cain on my heart, now my soul. <laughs> Uh, I can't Listen. see you. I was a little shaver, ten years old. With a big herd of cattle, 5,000 head. Do you know what a stampede is? The whole darn bunch goes crazy, runs wild, flattens anything that stands in its way. We was about 50 miles from Jacksonville. I was playing around with Pa's gun. My thumb slipped. A shot went off, Maggie. Ain't nobody can stop 5,000 head of stampeding cattle. They all got on their horses. My pa and the others. Three of the fellas didn't come back. Three bodies crushed of mush under those flying hooves. They was... My pa dragged me to where they was lying. One was my brother. With one slash of his quirt, he cut me to the bone. Here. Murderer, my father said. And he kept on repeating that word. Since that morning, I've been afraid of death. I'm afraid. I'm afraid, Maggie. I'm a coward, do you hear? A coward. Well, if that's it, please take me with you, Gary. Are you out of your head? You deserve a man, not a cowardly weakling. You are a man, Gary, and I'm all yours. Forever. It ain't right. I've got to go alone. Oh, Gary. Leave me be. Go away. Go away, will you? That's all. I'll clean my dad. What you looking for? A place to sleep and something to eat for me and my pony. <laughs> Got any money, kid? 
Be enough for you? Sure, it's enough for you grabbing a couple of beers if you want. Mary, why don't you go and fix the kid his eats? She'll serve you at the table, sir. Whoever you are, I'm fed. It's Tony. Tony from Clayton. Tony, my buddy, Tony, from Clayton. <laughs> my ego mio, show you Tony. But your home is in Clayton. No. My guardians got too tough, so I decided to move on out of there. They wanted to send me to a military school. That was very wise of you. You want to know something? Liberty and a pursuit of happiness. Better drink than that pants. Bring a glass, will you? Mary. All right. And the others? Where are they? We could ride together as far as Lewistown. What others? The others. The circus. What do you mean, the others? I'm through with Maggie Brown and the rest of them clowns in the circus. I'm through, yeah? Now I'm on my own. Stop it, Gary. I don't believe you. No fool. Hurricane West is tired of the circus. Uh, I'm aiming to settle down someplace. That's all. That's okay, Gary. I got an idea. I got a magnificent idea. Ride along with me to Lewistown and you'll see. You'll find on the prettiest little farm... My guardian, Mr. Brody, is a limey, but he ain't like Miss Claridge is. Besides, if you give me a hand, we'll make him change his mind. After all, it makes very little difference anyways. It makes a big difference for you and me, Tony. Shucks, I'm the owner, Gary. And Mr. Brody must agree when the law says that the land's mine. A thousand acres, Gary, right there under the hills. And there are 300 horses in the corral and pretty red cattle on the range. And then the house with lots of windows and a porch with a rocker. I ain't been home since that night, and that was such a long time ago. You'll see for yourself, Gary. It's as pretty as a picture. in pretty bad shape. Those hombres ain't farmers. Wonder who they are. I don't know. Believe me, it wasn't like this before, Gary. All right, you gonna say thank you? If it wasn't for us, you wouldn't get any exercise. <laughs> now, just a minute, Norton. Hey, Norton, come back here. Should be ten sacks. Instead, there are only eight of them. It's all I could manage, Mr. Oldroyd. You'll manage two more, because Roy Oldroyd tells you to. Can you get that through your thick skull? All right. I'll find two more sacks somehow. I'll bring them later today. Get going! <laughs> <laughs> hey, you your fat, Norton! <laughs> Don't seem to be any, any reason for us to hang around any longer. Let's get, come on. Hey, Mr. Norton. Mr. Norton. Tony. Tony Murphy. By all that's holy. What are you doing here, son? I wanted to live on the farm. That's a pretty poor notion, Tony. Who's that? Gary McGuire. 
Hurricane West. He's my buddy. Better talk at my place. Hey, come on. After your dad was killed, there was no hope for any of us farmers. The cowman was strong enough to make us give him half the harvest. We pay out, and they let us work what little land remains. If you don't pay, you find your crops trampled down by the herds of cattle they put out there to graze. In Johnson County, the farmers have put up barbed wire fences, and the cattle keep away. They murdered my pa because of that. Before my eyes. That's right. Clayton, Winnett, and Lewiston are their stamping grounds. But their headquarters is right there on your farm. Now Gary's here. We'll throw him out quick. You're kidding yourself, Tony. That's a job for the law. Not a lad like you. Uh, Tony, it seems to me it'd be better if you go to college in Boston. Well, I better make tracks to win it. I'll try to find some work there. Want to ride with me as far as Clayton? No, I ain't a going. Don't leave us all alone, Gary. Don't desert us. You're the only man who can take care of those outlaws. At Silver Hill, there were six to one, and he killed five of them outright. Please leave me alone. Half my land will be yours if you give us a hand again, them bandits. I gotta get going. Thank you, ma'am. I'm obliged to you. No, don't go! Let go of me! You want a marksman, you gotta pay him well. But I already offered him half of my farm. Half of nothing is nothing. No one would risk their lives for so little. Good night, dear. And a little me a butter champagne. What you say, honey? Sure, sure, sure. I'd better be making for bed. I'm tired. The beds here cost hard cash. You spent your last cents in that whiskey. <laughs> she got a bed I can have for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Just give me them guns, Gary. Come on upstairs where you can still make it. Put your arm around my shoulder. Mighty purdy. I'll look after them until you pay. Anyway, they're no use to you anymore. Without your pals in the circus, they're useless. The pals... Pals are no more tricks, see? Look at that candle there. My whirl guns. You... You never betrayed me. <laughs> You're right. You take them to her. <laughs> to me, they're no good anymore anyway. That's better. Now you're being a reasonable man. <laughs> Wait for it. Wait. Mm. Mm. Hmm. 
Excuse me, lady. Yes? Have you got a man lodging here called Gary McGuire? He's quite tall, wears a buckskin and a pair of silver-plated guns. Sure we have. He won't be awake. Room four. Thanks, lady. Wait a minute. Boy, does your name happen to be Murphy? Tony Murphy? No, my name is Jeremy. Jeremy? Then what? Jeremy Scott. Jeremy Scott. Purdy. It's a real pretty name for a boy. Thanks. Good morning, Mr. Colvin. Hi, Mr. Colvin. Good morning, Mr. Coleman. Good morning. I'm looking for Dora. She's upstairs, I think, sir. Give me a whiskey. Yes, sir. You've got to listen to me. Please, Gary. I'll pay you anything you want. Really, I will. In American dollars. Now you've got to decide. Now listen, Tony. You come here at sunup, break my well-earned rest, and begin some Pecos Bill tale about 30,000 bucks your dad hit. Are you kidding me? Uh, let me go to sleep. Gary. You think I'm lying, but I'll tell you where the $30,000 are hidden. My father said it was my money. Just a minute. You've arrived at the right moment. You get out. I've some mighty good news, Coleman. Know who I've got up there? Young Tony Murphy. Tony? You mean John Murphy's son? Thought you'd be pleased. He's with McGuire. I heard what the kid was telling him. Appears that just before he died, Tony's old man stashed a box away somewhere with 30,000 bucks. Where? I don't know. That little fellow's too clever. When he saw I was listening outside, he wouldn't say any more. That's no problem. We can find out everything when we have to. All we have to do is to have Brody invite him out to the ranch, see? <laughs> After all, he is the boy's guardian. He'll know how to handle Tony. <laughs> so you go and tell Brody what he has to do. Don't you see, Tony? It's not like you think. That money wasn't just your dad's. It belonged to the Union of Farmers. So if you won't talk, it's as if you've stolen it from a whole lot of good people. I'm afraid to trust anybody. But you see, I too. I'm on their side. I was your dad's friend, wasn't I? And think of the farm. You'll need the money to put that on its feet again. Mr. Brody, before I talk, please give your word my father's ranch will be repaired. Do you assure me? But certainly. Of course I do, Tony. Ah, but look who's here. Mr. Coleman. You remember Tony Murphy, the son of Jonathan Murphy? Yes, of course. I was a friend of your father's. Well, now, Tony, you've become quite a little man, haven't you? I hope an intelligent young man. After all, we're only here to help you. This money will be all yours, my son. You alone know where it's hidden. And no one else must ever know about it.
Come on, will you? Answer, Mr. Coleman. Want us to give you a beating? Why don't you speak up, you miserable brat? No, Mr. Coleman. Leave the kid alone. How much do you want to know? Oh, but wait, Gary. You can, I tell you. Out with it, Hurricane West. You'll be earning a thousand dollars without any effort. Where is that money? Don't tell him, Gary. We've got to stick together. Shut up, you <coughs> rat. A thousand dollars a lot on money. Sure is. Any guy would be chomping at the bit. You're just rotten. <laughs> Mister, you can offer me that in double. Or even 30,000. I've decided you ain't gonna find out no way. Don't play the hero, you fool. I'll loosen your tongue. For less than that. All right, boys. Come in. I think Mr. McGuire needs special treatment. <coughs> Sit down. Do you want to talk now? No. No! No! Cowards! Bullies! <laughs> But when you've had enough, you'll tell me. Don't be too sure, friend. Go ahead. Have your fun, Coleman. <laughs> Keep an eye on the kid. We'll have to lock him up somewhere. Down in the cellar. Don't worry about him. We'll take care of him. A few days without food or water, and I'm sure he'll tell us where it is. Why, that little brat! Gary, it's exactly the same. I recognize it immediately. It was hanging on his watch chain the night the farm was attacked, and I ripped it off. He's the one, Gary. It's positive proof. I know it's Coleman who killed my poor father. That night, I hid it in the box, and now it's in the chimney. Okay, Tony. Let's get out of here. You got a lot of courage. Goodness, you'd have put out ten like him if you'd been in my place. It was nothing, Gary. Tony, listen. I only what I appear. A pistol arrow. Nothing but that. Nothing more and nothing less. You think I'm a hero, but everyone knows I I'm a coward. No, it's not true. 
Yesterday, when they were beating you, you wouldn't tell them anything. You laughed in their faces. It proves you're not a coward. Yesterday was yesterday. Wait a minute. I'll go ahead. Hands off, Tony. Are you going to stop me? Yes, I am. Oh, oh but he's not moving. Afraid he's dead. Now listen, Tony. I want you to go to Norton's place. It's a good hideout. I want you to stay put and wait for me there. And you? Don't ask me questions. Just go there. Yours, Captain. that money really existed. Well, it does. I don't know where, but that brat does, and I'll get it out of him somehow. Give me another drink. My bet is that cash box is still in the room somewhere. That's where Murphy was murdered, and that's where they found Tony. Seriously, Coleman, if I were in your shoes, I'd tear the room apart. I think we should wait a little longer. After all, one's a child, and the other one's a coward. They'll spill the beans tomorrow. Mm, hope so. There's a lot of icing on that cake, and Dora loves icing. You'll remember Dora, won't you? <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Darling. <laughs> Come in. What is it? McGuire. He's escaped. What about the boy? He's gone too. They knocked me over the head. They killed Mr. Brody. You great idiot. Get Olroyd right away and find the boy. Then I'll meet you at the ranch. You will hear from me. Uh-huh. Saunders, you got to come right away with me. I can tell you all about it on the way to Norton's. Who are you, stranger? We got to save a kid's life, Sheriff. You better come with me right away. Tony Murphy. Does that name mean anything to you? Murphy. Why, yes, his father was killed two years ago. That's him. All right, boy. Let's get going. Open the door, Norton. It's McGuire. 
Miss Norton? Are we too late? Those brutes. This all happened so fast. I was putting the children to bed. And my husband heard a noise and went outside. But there were too many. I was attacked by all three. There was old Roy. There was no use fighting. They made off with the lad. Oh, what a night. Pour me whiskey. Any news of those two? No, nothing's come up. But it won't be long now. Fill it up. That's one good thing that's happened. At least they killed our friend Brody. It's one less mouth to feed if all goes well. I've been looking for you, Coleman. And I've been looking for him. So everybody should be happy. I want you to come out with me to Murphy's. I think you'll find it very interesting. If you mean what I think, Sheriff, it should be most interesting. It ain't probably what you're thinking it is. It's something you lost about two years ago, when you murdered Jonathan Murphy. That's right, Coleman. You guessed it. Something like you got on that chain. The mark you used for Brandon. Tony tore it off the killer that night. Want to know something? That killer was you. I wouldn't try anything if I were you, because, Mr. Coleman, you're in a lot of trouble. Quite some time we've been looking for proof. McGuire has it. And we got a witness, Coleman, your friend, Murphy's son, that your men had kidnapped. But you'll hand him over safe and sound, or I swear I won't hesitate to put a bullet in your forehead. Get going. Get those hands up. You're wrong, Sheriff. If you want me to go to the ranch, okay. All right, get going. Ah, ah, ah. Sheriff. Some of these faces seem very familiar. Let's go and have a look in town. Come on. Why, nobody wants a shot in the belly. Look, I'm anything but a hero. Man, I'm afraid too. But it doesn't matter. Those killers must be stopped and stopped right now. Every minute that passes, every second of indecision endangers the life of that boy. Now, who'll come with me? Oh, I wouldn't do it. It'd be suicide to fight Coleman. My friend, you just try and get near that ranch. You'll find out. It's got to be done. With or without you. You know, it's hard to believe this is a town full of cowards. Hey, gentlemen, what's going on here? Hey, you... How do you do, kiddies? What's going on Don't you like to come to the circus this afternoon? Is he in trouble? Mister, Give these he's local. Hands. He thinks he could fight Coleman friend. all alone. It's all good, clean fun. It's the greatest show in the Golden West. Pull him up. Who 
well. Do you feel like talking? Or do you want another bath? No, pity's sake. Stop, I'll tell you. <laughs> Well, the little brat was right, fellas. I reckon there's more than 30 grand here. Not counting the jewelry. Now put it back, friends. Listen, you know it isn't yours yet. There's over 30,000 nearly all in gold. Hope you ain't thinking of keeping it for yourself, are you? You'll be paid, don't worry. You'll all get a portion. Sure, a couple of bucks and a glass of whiskey, right? <laughs> You want to know something, Coleman? I'm through with taking orders from you. Get on the horse. Look, boy, gallop hell bent for leather. All the way to Lewistown. Find the sheriff and tell him what's happened. And you? I've got an account to settle with old boy. <laughs> and one with myself. Go on, Tony. Get. All right, get rid of those bodies quick, Jess. Harness up the horses, drive out, and dump them on the rain somewhere. Just a family war. <laughs> Little argument, see? <laughs> <laughs> Wiser, if we keep an eye on that box together. Yeah, dollars is so light, blow away with the least breath of wind. Right, Jess? We'd better divvy up right now. Then the boys and you and me can get going. You mean you don't trust me, fellas? Oh, boss, of course we do. But let's do it now. It's more sure. That way everybody's happy. Yeah, come on, boss. Divvy up. Well, now, would you look at that? Seems like there's still a few of Coleman's men around. Let's finish them. Here I am, old heart. Ready and wait.
bullets, Maggie. Ain't you got any? Why, no. Where can they be hidden? Don't you know? No, let's look. <laughs> here anywhere. What are we going to do? do it. going on? Stop there, old droid. Or I'll shoot you like the rattlesnake you are. Watch out. There's only one bullet. Mind, you aim good, because if you miss, I'm gonna fill you full of lead.
Now, please don't shoot. Now, please. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. I'll give you the money. Take it. Here, take it. Take it all. Take it all. Stop that. In Lewistown, they got a rope to string you up in Prano. Get going. That's right. But now that you are rich, Tony, will you still come to see me? Sure, in the front row. And now, Tony, my boy, we must roll up our sleeves. If God's willing, we make this into a garden even prettier than it was. Maestro! Music! Come one and all to the greatest show presented by Eustace Brown, which offers you the inimitable, the magnificent Hurricane West! 